Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about red dots with magnifiers. The pros, the cons, why you might want to use it, why you might not want to use it, and so on and so forth. We're not going to be doing a versus video about what's better between red dots and magnifiers versus other types of optics. If you guys are interested in that though, sound off in the comment section down below and let me know specifically what you're looking for. Are you looking like ACOGs versus red dots and magnifiers or LPVOs versus magnifiers? Which types, so on and so forth. Let me know all of that down below. I would appreciate it and we'll pull something together for you. With that being said, we need to say a special thank you to Primary Arms. They are somewhat sponsoring this video. Full transparency, they did send out the products for me to review, but I'm not getting paid to say anything good, bad, or indifferent. They just sent it out, and I'd like to say thank you to them for doing so and let them know that I'm acknowledging that they did that. So if you guys are interested in their products, swing on by their website. I run a whole host of their stuff and really do like the ACSS reticle. That's just my opinion. You can vary uh, and that's fine too. But let's get into it. We're going to be talking about the Hollow Sun HS503G ACSS red dot that I have set up on my BCM Mark II and their Gen 4 3X magnifier on here as well. The mounts that we are running are a uh, primary arms flip to side mount for the magnifier and then a ADM mount for the hollow sun. The total weight of this particular setup is right at 19 ounces. So uh, that is obviously going to be a lot heavier than just a red dot, obviously. But uh, a lot of things that people don't take into consideration is that's going to be about uh, six to eight ounces less than an LPVO. So that is going to be one of the major pros to having a setup like this, is you're going to be able to get magnification behind your red dot, get the reticle that you want specifically for your red dot, whether it be just a dot or a uh, BDC like the ACSS, and have it magnified without adding a lot of weight if that's something that you're concerned about. Now this particular flip to side uh, mount is going to be the type that you're going to have to pull in one direction and then be able to flip it to the side. This is going to be a lower one third co-witness on my um, iron sights if I had iron sights put on here, but um, I put this on here and left it on here for, uh, it's been on here for about 18 months and I did that specifically uh, so that I had it set up in such a way that I can pull this off and reconfigure it for something else in a future video. We'll be talking about that soon. So the biggest question is why would someone want to magnify a red dot? For the last 20 years, we have had the mentality that red dots are great for CQB, a house clearing type of thing, uh, where you can just put the dot on the thing and pull the thing. And, uh, and that I would agree with that. However, individuals who are wanting to kind of stretch the legs on their rifle, especially something like this BCM 16 inch with a mid-length gath system. This is a smooth shooting rifle. And if I wanted to drop in some 75 grain boat tail hollow points and really stretch the legs on this rifle out to four, five, 600 yards, adding a magnifier is going to extremely help your ability to get a round on target, especially with the HS503G and the ACSS reticle that is inside here, you're going to have bullet drop compensation to allow you to stretch those legs. The magnifier is just going to help you see that target better and uh, be able to uh, kind of shoot small and miss small, you know, that's kind of the adage there. So that is one of the great reasons why you might want to have this particular setup. In addition to that, this does also offer you the flexibility to either have a red dot or have a fixed powered optic. For a 
ACOG, you're looking at it being with the mount approximately 16 ounces. This is 19 ounces, so there's only a three ounce difference between the two. And with this particular setup, you're going to be able to have the ability to move this uh, magnifier to the side and just have a straight up red dot for you know targets 50 yards and in you won't need a magnifier for that so that is one of the great reasons why you might want something like this so let's talk about some of the cons with this particular setup first we've been talking about it it's the weight issue this is 19 ounces with both of these on here with the mounts and if you're looking for magnification you could look into one of the primary arms um, prism 3x sites that they have on the market today that's coming in with mount under 10 ounces so if you just absolutely have to have magnification uh, then you could look at one of their 3x prism optics again the biggest problem with that is the fact that you're going to end up uh, having a fixed powered optic so if that's not something that you're interested in uh, you want the flexibility, then you're going to have to deal with the weight. That's number one. Number two is a lot of people don't realize this, but for some magnifiers, especially this one right here, you're actually going to have to zero the magnifier to the red dot. And that sounds kind of odd, but that's what these knobs are on the top and side of the magnifier. It is to basically move that, uh, that optic to align it with the red dot. So you're going to align the red dot at the necessary yardage that you want to uh, go ahead and zero it at. And then you're going to put the red dot or the magnifier rather in line and then re-zero it to confirm. If it's not correct, then you're going to have to make some adjustments on it. And that can be a big pain in the butt for a lot of people. So those are a couple of different things that you're going to want to take in mind when setting this particular um, optic and magnifier up on your rifle. All right, so let's talk about my shooting experience with this particular setup. Um, short answer is, it's been great, no issues whatsoever. The Hollow Sun has Shake Awake technology, so 50,000 hours, all that jazz, what you would expect in this type of red dot. Um, the batteries uh, are the exact same ones that I put in when I mounted it onto this rifle 18 plus months ago, so no issues there. Magnifier has been great too, glass quality is good. Uh, I was able to zero the red dot at 100 yards and then confirmed it at 50 yards and put um, what three or five rounds right on top of each other at 50 yards so that's good for me uh, I do not pretend to be an expert shooter um, <laughs> uh, on a good day I might shoot MOA or less and um, this is definitely helping me be on my good days anytime I take this rifle out. Now, from there, uh, obviously flat range, 100 yards, yeah, that's great. I have stretched the legs out to 450 yards at the range that I have uh, available to me now. Uh, I don't really expect to shoot further than that with a 5.56. Five, uh, could I? Yeah, I have certain things set up uh, so where I could, I could do that here in the future, but realistically, uh, I, I'm not... I'm really not so interested in that that doing that with 5.56. Five, to be frankly honest with you, there's no need for me to do that. And that's another piece that you're going to have to consider when setting something up like this is what is the application? You know, for, for me and where I live, coyote hunting is pretty big, especially right now. And so having this type of setup is going to be extremely helpful in that type of environment. But if you're looking for something like CQB, home defense, uh, ranch defense, something to that effect, then you know there, there may be other options on the market that would be a better option than this right here. So just things to consider when setting all of this up. Like I said, uh, this is a interesting way to do things. Um, I've actually learned a little bit because I didn't know that you had to basically zero the magnifier to the red dot. Uh, so that was a fun experience to say the least. And I've really enjoyed that particular setup. 
Again, if you guys are interested in seeing a versus video between this and uh, say a uh, LPVO such as this right here, then sound off and let me know in the comment section down below. I would really appreciate it. At the end of the day, would this be the perfect setup for me? I don't think so. Not for what I'm looking for at the moment. Maybe I will change my mind in the future, but we'll see how that pans out uh, when I start setting my rifle up for something very specific. And we'll talk about that in another video. With that being said, thank you so much for swinging by. I really do appreciate it. Your guys' uh, comments, likes, shares, all of that has been a huge help to the channel. If you like the content that I'm doing, there is a thanks icon down in the below here for the YouTube video. I would appreciate the financial support too to help you know purchase things like ammunition and continue to bring you guys this content. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Again, thank you as always. Freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye y'all.